Last year, Kohei Uchimura of Japan won the World Championship Men's All-Around Gold Medal. One of the hardest things to do in sports is go back to back. But that is exactly what he'll attempt to do today in the Netherlands. As Universal Sports welcomes you to the 2010 World Gymnastics Championships. The Erasmus Bridge, one of the landmarks of the city of Rotterdam, connecting over the Meuse River, the north and southern parts of the city. Today, the men's all around. And finding gymnasts to compete in all six disciplines as they will today in the Ahoy Arena is becoming more and more difficult. The six qualifiers are set to go, Danelle Leva and Jonathan Horton of the United States, two of the six, as they become formally introduced to this crowd here in Holland. What are they focused on? Well, check out Yu Wan Chul of Korea. Look closely at his left shoulder, and you will see the tattoo of the Olympic rings, 2012 in London. That's the focus of everybody in this sport, except for right now and today. Al Troutwig, along with Olympic gold medalist Tim Daggett and Elfie Schlegel, let's start with Jonathan Horton. What do you think his chances are today to do something great? I, I think that he could do something great, and the main reason why is for so long he has been saying that he thinks he's confident, he's ready, he's prepared, but I don't ever think he truly believed it deep down in his soul. And I think that that's a key factor for him. But, you know, another thing that's important, for so long he also said that Paul Hamm was his idol. Now he switched. It's Kohei <laughs> Uchimura. That's who, that's who he will be battling. Now the six disciplines in men's gymna gymnastics are so diverse, Elfie, and, and to go back to back mm -hmm. and stay healthy to do it is something unbelievable. Well, it is grueling. And remember for Kohei Uchimura, I mean, he, he won last year's world championships. He's coming here with an injury, so he's not completely healthy. Less than 24 hours ago, he competed in the team competition the only other guy that's uh, won back to back and the only one was Yang Wei of China who won the Olympic Games in 2008 he was ahead of uh, Kohei at the Olympics so this is a, a title that Uchimura was really wanting these days anything in gymnastics involves the Chinese what's their factor in this event well you know believe it or not I don't think they're gonna factor in they're certainly not gonna win the gold medal and I don't even think they're gonna get onto the podium they just don't have that super star all-around gymnast strong words Tim Dagg mm -hmm. now to succeed today you have to have a divine belief in yourself and certainly Jonathan Horton wants to be a player yesterday he spoke to John McCready and discussed how he feels about his performance in today's men's all-around. I mean, if you know me well, uh, people think I'm crazy, but th there is nothing in this world that I think I can't do. And I absolutely believe that uh, not only can USA be the best team in the world, but I can beat Kohei Uchimura. Uh, whether it happens or not, I'm going to keep believing it because I'd have no reason to be here if I didn't have that idea in my head. Uh, I'm here to, you know, be a winner, and I'm I'm perfectionist. Uh, I've been doing this sport for too long to just be here to participate. Uh, I want to go out there and not only do well, but I want to put on a show for this crowd. I feel like I have exciting gymnastics. I want to do a good job, hit all my routines, and uh, see what happens. I mean, Uchimura, I have more respect for that guy than anyone in the world. The stuff he does and the, his ability to do it, so clean and beautiful. I mean, he's, he's amazing, but, uh, you know, it's gymnastics. You never know what could happen. And so it begins for American Jonathan Horton. Is it a good thing, Tim, that he begins on floor exercise? Yeah, I think so. But, you know, he's got some bad memories in his head from the team finals. He actually put his hands down on one of his tumbling runs. So we'll see how that affects him. But it's a good, it's a solid event for John. And like you said, Tim, he comes into this competition in much better shape. This is where he put his hands down and no problem there. Many people reminded John of his performance at last year's World Championships, which were pretty disastrous. And Jonathan said, you know, I'm, I'm going to put that behind me, and I'm going to focus on now. Little bit hoppy there, though. You know, every time you take, even if they're really small, you take two, three little hops. That's a tenth of a point each time. Next gymnast. Things did not go well for the Americans in the team final. They started after the first rotation down by eight points and eventually finished fourth. Yeah, they were, after three rotations, they were dead last. But uh, I, I do have to say that they did a tremendous job on the last few events and uh, really hung tough. And, you know, it, it was close for a while there. Germany just uh, was a little bit more consistent, a lot more consistent. Well, and they had such great momentum. 
Oh, big step and close, I don't know. Close to that line, if he steps over it, it would be an additional tenth of a point. All right, so what should he be thinking about that performance? Just, good, 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 solid start, but you know, he's wishing that he could have landed a little bit better. Here's where he had problems the first day. He was under rotated. He wasn't gonna under rotate today, so. And you know, John talks about catching up with Kohei, and, and what you'll see later on from Uchimura is the, the stuck landings. You see those two little hops there. Two tenths can mean a lot. All right, let's see what uh, shape the Chinese are going to be in. Tung Hai Bin on the pommel horse. Is that a good thing? Yeah. You want to get it over with? Yeah. Well, you know, for him, it, it's a great place to start. He's a world champion, and he's an Olympic champion on this event. He actually didn't make the team in 2008. He competed for China in 2004, where he won his Olympic gold medal on this event. As you can see, there's more than one event going on, and we'll be bouncing all over the Ahoy Arena. It's pretty incredible after 2004. I'm, he's been sort of missing in action. Nobody really knows where he went off to, but it's quite remarkable, at least in my mind, that he's back at this level of competition again. But what I want you to look at is the height of his hips above the pommel horse when he swings. It's just, it's huge. Well, it's that and the speed at which he works. It's so smooth. Very difficult to do those elements in between the two pommels. There's like no room. He had one small little form break, but... Oh, and that... That's a big break. That is disastrous. And now look at all the touches he's, he's got. What does every one of the touches of the horse and the pommel cost? A tenth of a point, yeah. You know, if, if, if it's just a little brush, it's, it's a tenth of a point. But that fall was no tenth of a point. That was one full point. And I would say that that pretty much does it for Tang Hai Bin in this all-around competition right there. You know, I say it over and over again. Pommel horse is all about balance. Are you on balance? It's like a seesaw. Wherever your shoulders are, your feet need to be exactly the opposite. Jonathan Horton's score of 14.866. It's going to be a damaging number for sure for Tong Hai Bin of China. The 2010 World The biggest day of the year in men's gymnastics continues in Rotterdam. One of the surprising stories in the men's team final were the Germans. They were consistent, and they're not complete. Injuries are a problem. This is Philip Boy. And, you know, he called that bronze medal team win a 100% dream. Just can't even believe it happened. Frankly, a lot of people can't. But this is an athlete that really executes. He has such great artistry in his gymnastics. It's one of the reasons why he is so high up in the standings. And he's, he's calm. That's, that's an important thing. He doesn't rush things, takes his time with the landings. And consistent. You know, with the Germans winning that bronze medal, it, it's amazing because they felt they had so much adversity to overcome. Their star, Fabian Hambuchen, only able to do four events, and the national champion out of this competition with a broken leg. Philip actually credits Fabian for making him see the light, as he put it, seeing that Germans could do well in international competition. He said Fabian's the reason and has inspired him. I'll tell you, he has been great so far. And that was a very strong start for Philip Boy. Wow. I'll tell you this, time really does heal all wounds. At the onset of World War II, Nazi Germany leveled the city of Rotterdam, just the one city, and it forced the Dutch to surrender. And now here, half a century later, he's getting a, an ovation yes. in that same city. Unbelievable. Beautiful 
flare work. He's got great execution, as Elfie said. Knees and toes are always locked. And the good news continues for Germany. We'll get his score in a moment. Kim Soo Myung on the vault. Al, he was actually the last qualifier in 24th place heading into this competition. Very nice. Starts on a strength. Yeah. And you know what? He might, he, he'll be one of the top gymnasts after rotation one, purely because he starts on vault. It's a little bit funky, but vaulting is by far the highest scoring event. Tim, is it possible that Korean success today as he gets a 15-9-6-6 is somehow traced back to having the Olympics in Seoul in 1988? You know, uh, I'm sure it helps quite a bit, certainly. Well, here's the king. The man we'll be watching, Kohei Uchimura. Look at that left shoulder, heavily taped once again. Remember, 24 hours ag ago, he was here competing for his team. I think that less than that. Less actually. than that. Today, he'll have to tackle rings. But he just makes everything look easy. Would you say that in Beijing, he came out of nowhere to win the silver? Yeah, he did. He came out of nowhere. And, you know, he actually had mistakes. Beautiful. Beautiful. He had some mistakes. Yes. Fell twice yes. on the pommel horse in the all-around yes. final, but still good enough to grab that silver medal. I mean, Al, when you're around a bunch of gymnasts and they're, they're talking about, you know, the greats of all time, He's certainly one of them already, and he's just a young kid. He, he's like an icon before his time. And he does this about as well as anybody. Same dismount that we saw from Philip Boy. It's a triple twist. Oh, <laughs> gorgeous. Just classic, beautiful gymnastics. <laughs> How many gymnasts of the six think that they can challenge him today? Well, I think John does, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, honestly, if they're being realistic, they know the only way that that could happen is he's got to fall, not once, but twice. Beautiful. Arabian double front with a half twist. He's the man. Gorgeous performance punctuated with an exclamation part. Point with a stuck landing from Uchimura of Japan. The men's all around continues in Rotterdam and after one rotation in men's gymnastics, it's really taking a risk trying to read into who stands where. It really is a matter of where the apparatus falls in your day. Now check out what happened to Lou Bo, who's talking to his coaches, and uh, he's got a, a, some sort of a, a hand wrist issue. Tim, what happened to him in warm-ups? Well, he was, he was doing some one pommel work, and his hand, it just slipped off. You can see it right here. Going to grab, stay on that pommel, and he just misses it and crunches down on the leather. And oh, it, no. Oh, Yikes. Ooh. <laughs> wow. I, I've never seen this on the field of play in any sport. Anybody else? Not, nope. <laughs> oh. Yikes. I think they got it deep enough. Yeah. Never seen one, but I got one. <laughs> well, in a little while, we're going to see if it works. Ooh. Boy, that was some oh, tough stuff there. Let's see Let's if the Germans see. can keep their thing going here. The transplanted Soviet gymnast Evgeny Spiridonov. This vault is valued out of a 6.2, of course. The second part of that score, if he does it perfectly, he would get a 10, so his maximum is 16.2. And this was good. You know, it's a little crooked right from the start. But not so bad. He stays in between that corridor. And for a 14.2, he gets a 15.383. And for now, at this moment, he takes the lead. Let's see how the doctor did with the wrist or hand injection for Lou Bo. Well, Lou Bo qualified third 
after the first day of competition. So this is an important exercise. And it's a good routine for him. But once again, you know, like you mentioned, Al, it all depends on where you are, what event you're on. Pommel Horse, one of the lowest scoring events as well. And it was his countryman, Young Wei, the Olympic champion, who won world back-to-back -back titles in 2006 and seven. And he's through the part where he fell in warm-ups. That one broke yes, for China, Looks a bit hyper up there. Looking like it worked. Ooh. Up to the handstand. And we now know that they injected him with super juice. That was amazing. Yes, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, you know, uh, one of the biggest problems, though, when you do that, th this is where it happened. Nope. This is getting ready for his scissor type elements one of the biggest problems with getting an injection like that is you know you lose sensation it can get a little bit numb and it can go down your fingers i think they're saying they didn't get it in the right spot <laughs> to maxim divyatovsky of russia ready for his fault Good event for him. Handspring double front. That was great. Yeah, right down the middle. Wasn't this one of the best vaults we've seen? That was that was fantastic vault. Very, very cat-like in his landing, but look at that height. Just a small little one-tenth hop, but that is going to get a very big score. Wyatowski for a total of 31.132. He now has the lead. And Lou Bo's number is 14.366. And that will put him sixth right now. What a tough competitor. It's actually a better score than he got in the first day of competition. All right, back to the man, Kohei Uchimura on the pommel horse. I guess, Tim, this is maybe one of those times when you would hope for one of those mistakes. Well, yeah, if you're somebody else, if you're one of the other competitors out on the floor. But I don't think he's going to give it to him. This event, rings hurts his shoulder the most. Pommel horse, from what we've been able to decipher, appears to bother it the next most. But he was able to score in the 15s, the low 15s in the first day of competition. Which on pommel horse is a very big number, as you just saw that 14 and change for Lubo. This is what I'm talking about, he is calm. Other guys rush and get a little bit crazy, and he just completely takes his time. It's so quiet. Right up to the handstand. Yeah, he keeps going like this. He is absolutely 100% unstoppable. Boy, is he going to rock Tokyo when the World Championships go there next year in Japan? Number 272 today, but he is number one right now. Kohei Uchimura, as the men's all-around, continues in Rotterdam. We're back in the Ahoy Arena in Rotterdam, which has a mash feeling to it. One of the Chinese gymnasts literally on the floor had an injection and then went out there and hit his routine. And here is the king of gymnastics right now, the reigning world champion, all-around gold medalist, Kohei Uchimura. What does that taping do? Well, it's supposed to position the muscles in a certain way so that uh, you decrease a little bit of the tension in the joint. Oh, and that was... Almost a sit down by Koji Umatsu. That was close. Yeah, not to mention the huge step to the side. Big deduction, wow, not he, only there, but there. He almost didn't get that to his feet. That was not good. Ranks him 15th 
combining the two scores. All the scores count, and we didn't see Danelle Leva's father in the team final, but he is right there for his son in the men's all-around. And this is a big one for Danelle. Is not one of his strongest events. They come a little bit later in his program. An area he has struggled is with the strength part, being able to completely lock them out. That was great. Hold for a complete two seconds. There's a second one, not bad. Waited to time his sing swing properly. Watch this now. This is very difficult to do that in the laid out position. This kid has a very bright future in gymnastics. I don't know if I've ever seen someone work harder and do more in a training session than Danelle Leva. Great job on rings. You can hear Dad exclaim in the background. Unfortunately, he has already been on pommel horse. And he did not fare well there at all. You should just call pommel horse heartbreak hill. Remember, this is for Danielle, his first all-around competition at a world championships. Watch laid out. Flipping skill there, very difficult. Actually, I think he does it about as well as anybody in the world right now. He's got a high degree of difficulty. And you see that towel right there? That carries it with him everywhere he goes. He says it gets rid of all the negativity. <laughs> I need one of those. How do you suppose it does that out? <laughs> I'm not sure. Here's Anton Folin of Uzbekistan. The bronze medalist on parallel bars in 2008 at the Olympics in Beijing as well as 2007 World Championships. Also has a very nice look, but you see those little hand placement changes? You can't do that. He makes it look easy. And that's what the best do. And those, those skills right there, the double flips, are very popular with the Japanese, Chinese athletes. And you know what? They hurt a lot. Your arms slam down just a little bit the wrong way, and you can be a hurt person. And that was fantastic. He had two little hand steps in the beginning of the routine, but wow. I misspoke. It's Anton Fokin. Beautiful release. This is the, uh, the second you see the kind of drag of the arms on the bar. This is great. Look at the landing there. And it's so hard to do because it's a totally blind landing. And it's very rare that we see the completely stuck landing, but that one was stuck. Danelle Leva's score combined ranks him 19th in the field. 12.3 is a score he'll have to absorb today as he smiles his way through the World Championships. Look closely. The men's all-around at the World Gymnastics Championships continues in Rotterdam. Debutovsky chalking up. Here are the standings. It's way too early to read into exactly what they mean, but I'm sure Jonathan Horton would love to be higher than 25th and Danelle Leva. 20 or, or 20th for Horton, 25th for Danelle Leva. Good job by Puerto Rico to qualify two men into this 24-man field. Luis Vargas Velasquez and Luis Rivera. Back to Debutovsky. And not to beat a dead horse here, but the reason he's on top at this point, and Hoken is also right there, is because they have both done vaulting. <laughs> I think he just yelled at his coach there. <laughs> well, and they still have Palma Horse. Yeah was your point as well. Very temperamental gymnast. Sometimes he's absolutely beautiful, like he is right now. And 
and sometimes he's not. Actually, on this event at the 2007 World Championships, he hit his foot, walked off the floor, didn't finish the competition. And yeah, left the podium, didn't he? Yeah, and his uh, head coach for the Russian team said, you are not on the Russian team now. Kicked him out. Came back to Beijing to finish sixth in the all-around. Looking sharp. A very nice routine for Debutovsky. Very nice. Maybe that little bark at the coach <laughs> spurred him on. Oh, I'm sure it helped. <laughs> the smooth Germans continue. Philip Boyd. You know, it's funny. He thought about quitting back in 2006 when he was about to make the transition from the junior national team to the senior national team. But this guy has a, he, he's got a spin on everything. He says everything he does has made him stronger and made him better. And even that, he said it, it sharpened his resolve. All the solitary hours, days, and months that this sport requires must challenge everybody to think about quitting a lot. Yeah, at, uh, at different times, there's no question. Because it hurts, too. You know, at the highest level, it's just, you know, taking some shots. This is not one of his absolute best events. He's, he's good here, similar to Adana Leva. Scored just about 14 and a half points in the first day. But wow, we are seeing some landings. Well, and this guy has momentum on his side too. He's just having an incredible world championships. You see the iron cross position? You have to be perfectly level and hold for a full two seconds. Dismount, piked position means your legs are locked out. Rocks the house on the landing. <laughs> He's got the right spirit for this. Now to another Russian, Sergei Korokardin. Big vault here. Oh, actually just a double fall. I thought he was going to do a two and a half. So this as we've stated, only starts when you total it up at 16.2. So that's what he would get if he did it perfectly. He did not. His rank is number three right now with a score of 15.466. Debutovsky got a 15.044, and that moves him back into first place. He was there in the first rotation. Now we go back to... Kohei Uchimura, the reigning world champion, can he make it three for three? And this is his biggest challenge today, without question. Remember, we watched them put the extra tape on his shoulder. We talk about routine scoring in the 15s, even a 15 being a great score. He, he got a 15-4 with this injury in the first day of competition. Very physically strong. You see that position? I guarantee, especially rolling into a strength part like that, that is just, that shoulder is grinding, and it does not feel good. too long there. No deduction though, but just aesthetically doesn't look real good. Here's the dismount. How serious can the injury be? Wow. He, he's amazing. 
No, I'm, you can't imagine how bad it hurts. When your shoulder hurts and you have to do rings, these swinging elements are torquing at the bottom every single time and then grinding into position and contracting every muscle in your shoulder just to maintain that position. It is punishing. And the Japanese team actually spared him this feeling in the team competition. We are seeing some gymnasts fight through it. The Blue Bow of China had an injection on the floor, and Philip Oyskor, we can tell you now, puts him sixth in the standings, 44.232. Tonight on Universe. Kohei Uchimura, the reigning world champion, all-around gold medal winner, ranks second right now, and talking about who leads at this point and thinking that they can win is like talking about the leader of the marathon at the halfway point and thinking that it means that they can win. Flavius Kochi of Romania, they just missed the men's team final. And this is a big boy vault. <laughs> oh, triple twist. He won silver last year at the World Championships and guess what, he's back in the finals. We'll be seeing him again on vault. But watch his body spin like a top here, keep going. Spot that ground, and just a small little hop. He's quick. Does it count as a hop? That counts as a hop, yes. Wow. That'll Look at that put, score. That'll put him top 10, 9. We don't see too many scores like that. 16.4. Back to the Koreans, Kim Soo Myung. And you know, no South Korean man has won an all-around medal at Worlds, but they did, of course, win medals at the 2004 Olympic Games. Kim Dae-yoon and Young Tae-young went bronze and silver next to Paul Ham. Huge judging controversy. I think one of the reasons why Paul Ham has decided to make, officially decided to come back and try for 2012. Think he's watching? I don't know. That was that was a little low, that position. Everything has to land in a handstand. I would say that was at least three, maybe five tenths of a point. But that was nothing. Some of the best landings I've seen at a high level meet in a long, long time. Stalter position that also a little bit short. And here he is getting speed for his dismount. He snaps his body over, launches into the air. That's two flips, two twists in a laid out position. Was it complicated enough to get a big score? It's going to get a big score. How about a 14 8? Yeah, that's way up from his first day score. He was in the low 13s. Our first look at Mikola Kuchsenkov of Ukraine. And once again, you'll see a big number because we are on vaulting. Nice vault, a little bit messy in the air. This is a Yurchenko style vault. You, most of the women perform this type of a vault. And a 15.7. Put some third right now. As we come up on the halfway point of the men's all around in Rotterdam. Anton Fokin of Uzbekistan. He had a good start. But his team only placed 23rd in the qualification. But they did make it. The top 24 will move on to the World Championships next year in Tokyo. It's really hard for some countries to generate any depth, isn't it? Uh, very difficult. <laughs> Remember, all these pirouetting skills you need to land right in a handstand. Especially if you're not performing and those high flying was, skills. That one was not even close. Yeah, there's really two schools on men's high bar. What 
this gymnast performed and the others like Danell Leva and Jonathan Horton doing the high flying skills. That's a very low start value. I don't think that's going to get a good number. Let's see if Jonathan Horton can make a move up the standings. This is where he starts to fly, though. When he gets past Floor and Pommel Horse, then it's, it's just like all good for John Horton. One of the strongest all-around gymnasts in the world presently. Well, and he's capable of scoring a great score, which would be in the 15s. He is built for this event. Just so compact. <laughs> Little bit of swing, but so far, excellent. I wonder if Jonathan even heard that horn. Yeah. No, I, I don't think so. When I was competing, I didn't, I didn't ever hear anything. I heard the Swiss cowbells when I was competing. Well, that's because you're supposed <laughs> to hear the Swiss cowbells. That's what they're for, right? They were loud. And Jonathan Horton looking good on still rings. So we're halfway, and we'll find out what the judges give him and see if indeed he is making a move up the standings in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Someone just ordered on PapaJohns.com, and Papa John is already on his way. Papa's in the house. I got pizza. <laughs> Get an order of cheese sticks free when you buy any large. The men's all-around continues, and the scoring in gymnastics these days can often be confusing. For example, Jonathan Horton got a 15.366 a moment ago on still rings, and you know, on most apparatus, that seems average. But guess what? It was the highest score recorded so far on still rings. Here's Philip Boy of Germany on the vault. Jonathan Horton coming up on the vault as well. And Uchimura, the reigning world champion on the vault as well. And I do a handspring double front three times around. A very good vault, but gave up quite a bit on the landing. If you take a step forward, and then put your foot back, it's only one step. And of course those deductions will come in the execution portion of the score, which the maximum is a 10. See, step forward and then another step forward. So that is two steps as opposed to just one. Yeah, looks that like, pinches. Looks like he might be limping a little bit and it's a little harder to force out that smile, but he moves right now and we're early in the fourth rotation to the top spot. That's where Uchimura wants to be when the day is done. Hey, Al, 15 <laughs> seconds from now, there's your leader, guaranteed. Now, what do we think that is? Well, what he's doing, he, you have to both be very square on, it's called the round off, where you turn around to get onto the board, and you also have to land inside the corridor. He wants to be right in the middle. That round off, and then that. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought he had that one. So close. You know, it's, it's I mean, that was fabulous. It's going to get a very big score, but I always say he's so patient. And on this landing, I think he just needed oh. to wait a little bit. He kind of sat his chest up. A little bit too quick, but it's a big score. Been doing it all week. Tim, as usual, right on into the lead goes Kohei Uchimura. His teammate, Koji Umatsu. Yeah, I, I know they're from different planets, continents, but Uchimura gives off a little Roger Federer persona to me. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's really like something I've never seen before. <laughs> Here comes a release. Whoa. Boy, he got his hands on really late. Japan was really in the hunt for the gold medal with China. Oh, gosh. And then something just like that happened. Very difficult release combination, and he just cannot 
sustain the forces through the bottom. Here it is once again. There's a Takamoto into this double flip over the bar, and he just doesn't really get his palms completely around the bar. And that is one point off. Actually, more than a point because he loses the element. And the combination. He, he catches really late, way at the bottom. See how his wow. hands don't go get on the bar until his body is swinging right through the bottom. But this routine is like just jacked. Yeah, what a shame for that fall. This, you know, this is his world championship debut. It's great gymnastics. Well, with this field, can't really deal with a fall. American Jonathan Horton making the right move in the third rotation, move from 20th to 15th. Also do that double front. Too bad. That's He's been much more consistent on that vault. He's actually stuck this vault quite a few times. That hurts, though. Yeah, you always want to be a little bit over on this. He gets great power. Good jump off the table. And then just a little bit. Does he go over that line? No, he doesn't. But two, not steps. They're, they're bounding steps. So... That's going to be about four or five tenths lower. Koji Lomatsu may have uh, done something to his right arm coming off the bar. Wouldn't be a surprise, would it? When you ping off the bar like that, your forearms, they just, they like go into spasm. And it's like really hard to grip. Mikola Kopsenkov of Ukraine. Mikola was actually ninth all around at last year's World Championships, but he qualified 11th coming into today's competition. Uh, a nice giant to a full spin called a Diamadov. Ukraine has had some of the greatest gymnasts of all time. Both post wall coming down and free Larissa Latinina nine go Olympic gold medals a nice job fairly clean but doesn't have all of the bells and whistles and isn't going to get a huge score rather stoic reaction from the coach Dismount, nice double pike. Slides his feet on the landing. That'll cost a little bit. Let's check back in with uh, Maxim Divyatovsky and see if he has a little yell at his coach right before he goes <laughs> on the high bar. He was fifth all around at the last World Championships. Came to the American Cup this year and he won that title. Yeah, he loves to compete in the U.S. as it was a great jump start to a season. A little, a little sloppy there. And a little sloppy there, too. And a little sloppy there. Each one of those were at least one-tenth of a point. I think one of them was probably three. And the toes are always flexed. Well, he, wears, he wears gymnastics shoes, and it's, it's the most bizarre thing. Well, it really stands out. It actually accentuates the feet a little bit more. Hey, Elf, that was called a Russian giant, that funky-looking thing. Yeah. I think that was called a stuck landing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's doing his job today. Yes, he is. But you never know with him. 
I'll tell you. You just never know. So. This is release into his dismount. Fighting for that landing, too. They say that, that you can actually deduct for the arm swing, but I don't think they do. He's an intense competitor. Well, if Jonathan Horton is going to move up from 15th place, he's going to have to get busy. He's already on the move here to the next apparatus, and there are only two of those to go, deciding the men's all-around gold, silver, and bronze. Interest championships continue in the port city of Rotterdam, the second city of Holland to Amsterdam, but it's the center of gymnastics this week after four rotations and the drama builds now. The favorite Kohei Uchimura in first. Look at Jonathan Horton of the United States. He's moved all the way up from 15th now to sixth. Two apparatus to go. Maxim Devyatovsky in second place. Hanging tough. Now here's Umatsu. Can he shake off his fall off the high bar? You know, I asked him what his best what his best quality was and he looked at me and said nothing <laughs> <laughs> that's confidence for you yeah perhaps a few I'll, skills I'll, I'll never remember it that i fr prodded him he said high bar so you know, disappointing sticking would be a good quality he has yeah, he's actually a beautiful gymnast well remember first world championships can you imagine what it will be like for him if he's on the Japanese team next year in Tokyo? A little bit jumpy there on the landing. Now we've talked about the scoring on the various apparatus and vault being a higher scoring event. This has been one of the more difficult events to get a 15, which in gymnastics is typically a, a good score. And he held on. Yes, he did. Just a little hop on that landing, but Another very strong routine. With the rules, it is just non-stop on floor exercise. The athletes really have had to transform themselves into somewhat partially endurance athletes, but that was beautiful. Great landing. This is where hops around a little bit, looks a little bit awkward, swings the arms, all of those things. Postural deductions. Gymnasts treat that like they're falling off a cliff, don't they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> do anything to stay in bounds. All right, back to the first place, Uchimura. And he has got what I believe is best two events still to come. And he's the leader. Parallel bars and high bar. The perfect lines, the handstand positions, and he's so light on this apparatus. Most gymnasts would be getting ready to get off at this point, Dick. He's just getting started. Just love those double backs and double front flips. It's really taking this event to a whole new level. Crazy hard. Double pike usually sticks. Oh. Well, it was a great, great exercise. Just those two hops on the landing. See that little step? That was an error as well. So it really was right in the beginning and right at the end where look at this release.
He actually says that compared to last year, he's at about 80%. <laughs> that's, that's what his shoulder has limited him to. Now they're working on the uh, right shoulder. He's going to be happy when this is over. <laughs> and he's got one more apparatus to climb. Uematsu moves into second place, but there are some leaders still to go. So how do you think Danelle Leva's done today? Well, he hasn't had the best, best of days. He really struggled on pommel horse, and then he didn't do what he's capable on parallel bars. But this is really Danelle's event. He's capable of about two years from now winning an Olympic medal, and it could even be gold on this event. Well, he'll be in the event finals in this competition. Watch this. He's going to do this release and throw his arms out to the side. Look. Oh, it's great. Here, release. This is called a Lucan. Very nice. Little bit of arm bend. Watch his dad, bottom left. He's just living this routine with them, isn't he? <laughs> that is Yin Alvarez. Beautiful jam to handstand. Has been so consistent throughout these championships on this event. Watch his dad. You'll see a show, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, baby. That should make him feel a little better. Now, Tim, in this world right now, was that a gold medal worthy performance? Uh, you know, it, it, it was just a little bit sloppy. A little, and he, he has to get just a little bit better at keeping those feet pasted together. But difficulty wise, I don't, I don't know anybody. Look at that, how he throws his arms out to the side. That is so awesome. Just makes that skill just a little bit different. Next on course from Belarus. And with a performance like that, he earned his spot in the event finals. The thing that's so great about his exercise, though, is it's, he's got everything. He's got a variety <laughs> of skills. It's great. Magda Mikula of Ukraine, Kuksenkov. Started to talk about some of the great Ukrainians. Also, Igor Korovchinsky was considered one of the head coaches. He was an all-around world champion. Very nice release combination. Comes another one. You can. Wow. Very, very well done. Next. This is like done over and over again. So many athletes do that combination. Tim, is he good enough to be the breakthrough Ukrainian that wins his country's first all-around medal? You know, he's good. He's very good, but I don't think that he's quite got the juice for that. Not yet. Very strong, very clean. Got a lot of stuff in that routine. And Danelle Leva's number ranks him eighth. He got a 15.6 on the high bar. That is. Um, Rocking gymnastics and Kuksenko right now is in second place. Two moments of truth remain for Jonathan Horton in the men's all around at the World Championships in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. He'll finish on the parallel bars and then move to the high bar. After the fourth rotation, he was in the sixth spot, having come all the way back from 20th fighting just the way the American men did in the team final. And, you know, he 
has two great events, not just good events, but great events, especially high bar, his last event. But, you know, remember just a year ago, he, devastating performance at the World Championships. Said he was embarrassed by it, was 17th in the all around. But just wants to put that aside and focus on the routine at hand and a great score would be in the 15s for Jonathan. Dismount. Mm. Wow. He there you go. It. He wants it. Well, that could make the final rotation interesting. That was very good. Very good. He said in 2009 there was no consistency in his training. He thought he could rely on past experience, a bronze medal and a silver medal at the Olympic Games in Beijing. But he said experience doesn't do all that. Thank you. Had to get back into the gym, consistently training. And like I said at the top of the show, he really, he looks like he believes it now. He believes that he can hang with the very best in the world. Well, it's going to put him on the podium for now. That certainly is a great step in a world championship medal direction. Jonathan Horton of 15.2. Okay, in second place after the fourth rotation was the slightly prickly Maxim oh. Debutovsky. Yeah, he's a very capable gymnast. He really is. And, you know, he's, he's had some extremely consistent performances, but he's also had a handful where it just, when it goes wrong, it goes really wrong. You see the look he just gave the camera? <laughs> He's a character. Uh, you know, for me, when I was competing, the absolute worst thing about a competition was all the waiting. Meanwhile, uh, Kohei Uchimura, right shoulder rubbed down, left shoulder taped up, surviving the rings in the top spot, trying to go back to back gold medals in the world championships. Only been done once, as LP mentioned. Who went on to win the Olympic Games? A little impatient. And now given the green flag. In the team finals, Maxim came off in one of his release moves on high bar. We wondered if he would bounce back, and he did. It's be difficult for the Russians to figure out where they stand in the world right now. They couldn't even get to the European Championships earlier this year because of that volcanic cloud from Iceland that covered most of Europe. Yeah, and they didn't have their best competition here. They're certainly in the mix. There's no question about that. Very nice. Classical gymnastics look. To mention the endurance that's involved in getting through these exercises. Today you can, you know, I've watched a lot of these guys. They're, they're taking some pretty deep breaths before their tumbling passes. Really good. Really good. Well, he's into it. He's part of the mental picture. The sixth and final rotation is going to come right down to tenths. Who gets what? So, Elfie, how would you des describe how he went through this floor? Well, easily. Right from the very start. And no recognizing how important the stuck landings are in each of these tumbling passes. But... You know, he's on fire. He's He wants a medal. And he has 
pommel horse, which can be precarious coming up. But so far today, I wouldn't even say so far so good. I'd say so far so great for him. It's a 14.9. Oh, the scoring is so tough to that, figure that's out. A on very, that's a very good score on floor. But not on some of the other apparatus, yeah, which is just strange. All right, so now from his story to the story of the Germans. They were absolutely ecstatic about the bronze medal, weren't they, in the team? In the team competition, he said it was just sensational. It really gave him inspiration for the all-around. I mean, this has started for the Germans back in 2007 in Stuttgart when they won the bronze medal. Of course, Fabian Hambuchen did so well there. He, he's a rock star in Germany. They have two German athletes who could potentially next year at the World Championships be vying for gold medals. Fabian, of course, is a little injured, a little beat up right now. Aren't we all? <laughs> Great lines. Some of, the, some of the best lines in the entire competition. A lot of times when people say the Chinese have the best lines, he's as good as that. Well, and it's so pretty to watch. I mean, this is the essence of gymnastics. It's, it's just exquisite work. He, very, very artistic in everything he does. He says when he was younger, he got injured a lot because he wasn't consistent in his training. So that helped him, he learned from it. That ranks him fourth. He'll be in medal contention as we go to the sixth and final rotation. And so will Jonathan Horton after this. You might not realize. We could have some career-defining routines in the next few minutes. Kohei Uchimura trying to go back to back. And everybody else just wants to somehow find a way to get on the podium, including German Philip Boy. It would be the greatest thing he's ever done. And American Jonathan Horton. Now, Great Britain has the Olympics in 2012. What have they done, Tim, to create gymnasts like Daniel Purvis? They have done an absolutely amazing job. If there is one team, men or women, on the floor that I think is most improved, it is the Great Britain team, the men's gymnasts. They, they really are tremendous. They actually underperform a little bit in the men's team final, but they have a lot of talent. They're also trying to help out their athletes as they lead to the 2012 Olympic Games. They have like an Odin the Podium type of system that the Canadians had for Vancouver and their Winter Olympic athletes. They're paying these athletes a salary. And how seriously hurt is their top gymnast, Daniel Keating? Well, it was, it's about as serious as you can get. He tore his ACL, the ligament in your knee that provides most of the stability. It's a little bit sloppy here on high bar, but he did that back in May, and reports are saying that he's doing very well in training. I really think that they're going to do a great job come 2012. They're not quite there yet, but... The biggest day of the year in men's gymnastics continues in the Well, a solid set. Had but like I said, errors. yeah, there, there was some legs flying around there. You know, he called that bronze medal team win. A 100%. And now let's see if uh, Mikola Kuksenkov can make a move. We've seen a lot of him today. Yeah, boy. Oh, he's done a tremendous job. But this is an athlete that you know, really uh, executes. He in has such great 2007, the Ukrainians placed 13th in the all-round, which prevented them from competing at the Olympic Games. That is devastating for a country. It has really plagued them. They have almost no funding. For example, Oleg Astapenko, who was coaching in Brazil, wanted to go back home, and he tried to get a job in the Ukraine, and they said, no, we have no money. Mm -hmm. So he is now the junior national team coach in Russia. A little bit shaky there. Now we could see him look over yeah, to the clock. Exactly. And it's a wow, what a competition for this guy, I'll tell you. He has done 
a fabulous job. The only problem is Ukraine was once again 13th here. If they do that again mm. next year in Tokyo, then they will not go to London for the Olympic Games. How about this one? We've got all the leaders to come, but there he is. Take a picture. Right now, <laughs> ranked in first. And guess who's number two? Great Britain. As Daniel Purvis gets a 14.6. Of course, a lot is going to change. Jonathan Horton. He'll be on the high bar. And my guess is that, considering what we've seen in the past, that's a great thing for him. It, it can be a great thing. Without question, it can be. There you see the official numbers for Daniel Purvis. His hair is awesome. <laughs> Fiery. You know, John won the silver medal at the Olympic Games on high bar, and I went back and looked at the routines of Zokai and him a bunch of times, and I, I really think that they made a big mistake there. He should have gotten that gold medal, and, you know, a kid like John, all he's thinking about is, is, is winning. Oh, beautiful. Very nice. He's got a bunch more. Little bit of a form separation, but here comes another big one. Oh, she's one more time. One more time. Grab the bar. There it is. Well, John wasn't perfect today, but he was really good. <laughs> Can there be a better way to end your day? <laughs> oh, Coach Tom feeling. Meadows. That was a great job. As a coach, it's a moment where you feel like maybe we actually did accomplish something great together. Uh, it's the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> Watching your athlete do high bar in a competition when you're coaching. You have no control over it. Just watching them fly all over this high bar. <laughs> Been watching Yin too much. Setting up for his dismount right here. And he can do two twists. Or he can actually do three twists. He did three twists at the Olympic Games to win that silver medal. He says with this routine, it's just a little too too long he doesn't have the endurance for it yet we will get to Jonathan Horton's score when they post it now let's see if Maxime Divyatovsky can seal the deal in second after the fifth rotation this is his final chance to get on that podium yeah he just wants to get through you know because uh pommel horse like we've said is one of the lower scoring events A lot of the gymnasts are starting out with their scissor movements. Temporary gymnastics. All about balance. Doing an excellent job. He's got a nice circle. A little bit of a form separation. Next gymnast on the floor from China, Ping Aibin. Now he's moving well. Yeah. Oh, oh. You're kidding. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh. Oh. Oh, dear. Total disaster. Oh, he's going to want to beat up that pommel horse. We've talked about this. You know, when he has a mistake, he oftentimes cannot get back into the game. And... He had not a game changer, but big enough that it obviously affected him mentally because that dismount, that's not hard for him. Boy, Tim, it's tough luck to get the pommel on your last oh, shot. Yeah, not fun. So a chance to get on the podium comes crumbling down for Debutovsky. There's nothing to say to him at this moment. All you want to do at that point is throw something really hard. The first error right there. Like I said, not 
not catastrophic, probably would have kept him out of the medals, but then you go from that right to his dismount. And he's just rattled. You can see he's spreading his legs a little bit. Ouch. How about the joy of one coach on the American side? Moments later, the Russian coach hiding no emotions. Jonathan Horton gets a 15.033, good enough to put him in first for now. That was good. Ouch. Oh, 11.166, that's the worst score we've seen in a long time. Okay, nerves, fatigue, whatever you want to say, played into it. This is the biggest performance of Philip Boy's gymnastics career. It's a chance to put him on the podium at the World Championships. All by himself. Unbelievable. It's like Daniel Keating from Great Britain won the silver at the last World Championships, and really it was unthinkable. Nobody thought he'd do it. This guy, he grabs the bar enough times. He's definitely going to be there because he's good here. Super high difficulty. That was close, man. Boy, the crowd is into this. <laughs> Boy, he almost tossed it all away there. That was great, though. Beautiful. Wow, he can fly. Puts this to his feet. He is a medalist. <laughs> well deserved. Tim, could he have been much better? No, just, you know, really just that one spot in the middle of the high bar routine, but this entire competition, and it's not just him. It's, the, it's the entire German delegation. You saw that. He bends his arms. You bend your arms just like bending your knees. You get deductions for them, but that he was able to somehow hold on, get his grip back. Elfie, what's a good German word to describe how he feels? Oh. <laughs> Putting me on the spot. <laughs> Let me think about it. How about sehr, sehr oh. gut? Yeah, sehr gut. But now it's just a waiting game. Wait for the first number and then wait for the last gymnast to go. He's mad at himself for taking that step on the on the landing and also look at this huge air. It's actually called a casina, named after Olympic champion Igor Casina from Italy. Here once again is that mistake. Oh, so is, is that gonna haunt him? I hear some excitement in the background, and that's why. He's in first place for now. He has moved ahead of Jonathan Horton. And he knows he's going home with a silver souvenir or maybe gold. It all depends on what Uchimura does. Wow. Wow. Look how defiantly he stands there. He's got such a cool presence about him. Jonathan Horton from 20th to the podium. Yeah, he did a great job. He truly is the leader of this U.S. team. The Japanese have been electrifying for some time on the high bar. And here's your defending all-around world champion. And he will be electrifying again today. I guarantee it. Big release. Huge air. Kicks out. Problem with that in the team competition, and once again, a problem with it doesn't travel over the bar. Not a not a game changer, though. Now watch how he's going to kick out of this move. Beautiful. Nobody in the world does it like that. It's so light. And again, Just gives the gymnastic fan everything they want to see. <laughs> Tim, he only needed 12-7.
Yeah, so you think? You think? we knocked him <laughs> out of the park. He was so much fun to watch. There he is, right there. He is only the second gymnast in the history to have repeated oh. as world champion. We don't need to wait for the judges. It is a done deal. And there's a silver medal smile. And that cool customer, <laughs> Kohei Uchimura. Nothing but respect from one German gymnast to one great world champion. Boy, Tim, consistency is a word that comes to mind, but it's 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 higher than normal consistency, right? It's it's some uber consistency. Yeah, without question. This guy, though, yeah. nobody thought he wasn't going to win. It was completely his to lose right from the get-go. Look at how consistent his scores were on all the different judging apparatus. Yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking that he's closing in on being. Part, maybe one of the all-time greats. And it leads to great anticipation of what's going to happen at next year's World Championships when for Uchimura, it's a home game in Tokyo. Third place and winner of the bronze medal from the United States of America, Jonathan Horton. Jonathan Horton will miss the silver medal by just a couple of hops. A couple Second of tenths. That's this sport in a nutshell. The silver medal aus Deutschland, Philipp Boy. And Philipp Boy with an unlikely silver medal. Consistent, wasn't he? Oh, he was fantastic. Classic, classic gymnast. First, the Germans win the bronze Fourth unexpectedly for the team competition. Well, they've been great here. World champion. From Japan. The performance bringing tears Kohai to eyes. Uchimura. Uchimura winning back to back. World all arounds. And it was pretty much a blowout. He did it by over two, ten, two full points. Yeah, he is the man. I mean, everyone around Four, the world is going, two, eight, how eight, is it possible Mikola to Kuzenko, try to catch this guy? Mikola Kuksenkov, who was a. Huge part of our coverage finished only five hundredths of a point. I and mean, that's wiggling your finger in a bad way. Five hundredths of a point behind Jonathan Horton. Yeah, he did a fantastic job today. The gold medal is presented by Mr. Adrian Stoika, president of the Men's Technical Committee. <laughs> the silver medal is presented by Mr. Lee Had a shot Wang, just a moment ago. Vice president of the Men's Sukahara. Technical Committee. The all-time greats and the from the Japanese Ichiko, legacy. Fourth member of the Royal what is it that separates Uchimura, Tim? You know what? He, he I, I don't know him personally, but I would have to say that he's incredibly gifted. He's, uh, you know, he's just a born gymnast. You see, you see athletes that have these qualities. They're, they're just so natural. Things that he does with ease, other people. You know, it takes repetition after repetition for days, weeks, months. And how he handles competition, just the mental toughness being in this event. Remember, he was injured. I mean, it's just crazy standing at the top of the podium. We will be hearing from Philip Boy in a matter of minutes. Can't wait to hear what that face has to say. And we'll hear from Jonathan Horton as well as he tries to put this uh, bronze medal into perspective as far as his career is concerned. Damage That's here the here men's all-around in Rotterdam. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. The World Championships are in... Jonathan Horton just came off the podium for the first time. You're a world medalist. How does it feel? Feels awesome. You know, I, I thought it was kind of weird before that I won an Olympic medal before a world medal. But, oh, man, I can't describe the feelings. You know, I worked so hard for this. Had a rough year last year, but I came out here, did my job, and I got this bronze medal around my neck. You started on floor exercise, which gave you problems last night. You, you conquered that tonight. You went to Palm Horse, fist bump at the end of your routine. How did that feel after Palm Horse? Felt great, you know. My floor and Palm Horse routines weren't the best that I could do. Um, uh, to be totally honest, none of my routines were the best I can do them tonight. You know, I had some struggles everywhere, but I fought through it. You know, I persisted through everything. and. Like the last event high bar, I mean, I was I was kind of panicking, you know. I'd never been in that position before. 
But that's Team USA. We fight and uh, see what it got me. He was kind of panicking, but he got through it and put up a 15.033. And now you look at the final standings. And Jonathan Horton needed every one of those points, every one of those tenths, every one of those hundreds that he put together in the six events that comprised his men's all-around for 2010. Yeah, without a doubt, if he had not stuck that dismount right there, he would not be wearing a bronze medal. And then you have the day of Philip Boy. Yeah, what a fantastic performance by this young athlete. I mean, it just competition of a lifetime for him. And he should be as equally proud and excited as Jonathan Horton was. Let's find out in his conversation with John McCready. That's the maximum. That's really the maximum. Nobody believed it in the before the World Championships uh, because we have problems with the team member and so many problems in the preparing time and now we have here the bronze medal and I have a silver medal and all around this is dreams come true. And it's even a little bit more touchy for Ukraine's Mikola Kuksenkov. He would have been the first ever gymnast from his country on the podium if he had one less <laughs> hop, one less tenth taken away. Ouch. Okay, <laughs> your summary of the day. Uh, it was unbelievable competition. It really, what it comes down to is Uchimura just keeps putting exclamation marks after his name. He is by far the man, and uh, it, I, I don't know how you stop him, to be perfectly honest, but Jonathan Horton, he did a great job. He, Like he said, he wasn't perfect, but he never gave up. He just kept fighting all the way to the end. And LP Jonathan Horton puts oh. tremendous separation between an Olympic medal and a world mm. championship medal, and it almost sounded as though he was talking about completing a career with, with everything you need to have a complete career. Well, he said the world championship medal was something he has dreamt of his entire life. He's surprised he had won an Olympic medal before this, but this medal will do wonders for Jonathan as he heads into next year's World Championships and, of course, 2012. He, he's going back to review those tapes to see how he can get a little closer to Kohei. And speaking of 2012, there was a little hint that we could be looking forward to some great British days in the O2 Arena that year. Yeah, no question. I, I think that they are a team on the move, and they're going to be a factor. Well, that is going to do it for our coverage of the 2010 World Gymnastics Championships. At least in this particular sense, the men's all-around champion comes from Japan. And he set himself apart by more than two points. And in gymnastics, two full points is a ton. That's how impressive Kohei Uchimura was today in front of a near-packed house called the Ohoi Arena in Rotterdam. With Elfie Schlegel and Olympic gold medalist Tim Daggett, I'm Al Troutwick. We'll see you again soon right here for more great gymnastics on Universal Sports.